Hey everybody! It's Tuesday again, and that means it's time for another episode of True Crime and Paints, a video series I started where I come on here, paint a painting, while I talk about a true crime case. So if you're like me and you fall asleep listening to true crime podcasts, I would love for you to stick around, maybe subscribe, definitely like the video while you're here. For today's episode, we are going to be talking about Joseph Metheny. Have you heard of him? If you haven't, I'm just going to give you some fair warning here. You might think twice about that food truck on the side of the road that's selling that, that mystery meat. Because you never know what it might be. Before I start painting and before I get into Joseph's story, I do want to give a quick disclaimer. Today's video is going to cover some very dark topics, including possibly feeding people to other people. So if that sounds like something that might upset you, I would say maybe skip this video. You've been warned. Let's jump into it. Joseph was born in Baltimore, Maryland. He was one of six kids, and I couldn't find much information about his father. All that was said that was he was like a hard worker, an alcoholic, and he might have had some anger issues. He actually died when Joseph was around six years old. Now, his mother, having her husband die was left to take care of six kids. So she worked multiple jobs, double shifts, was, you know, just working all the time. She was like a waitress, a food truck driver. She just had like every job under the sun. Now, according to Joseph, he said that he was really neglected as a child, which, you know, I could see because his mom was working so many jobs, it'd be hard for her to, you know, give him a lot of attention. That being said, though, I mean, she was working hard to, like, you know, keep a roof over his head and keep him fed. So can you really, like, blame his mom? I personally don't think so. But Joseph said that his childhood was really terrible, he was neglected, and he claimed that his mother died to some people, and he also claimed that he was in like multiple like foster-like situations at points, which his mother says isn't true. So it's really hard to determine much about Joseph's child and what him growing up was like. According to his mother, though, he was very smart, uh, everybody loved him, he was a great kid, yada yada yada, you know, all, all that stuff. And if, you know, from what you're going to learn about him later, I don't, I mean, I have some doubts about him being this great kid that everybody liked, but I'll save that for your opinion as we continue on with the story. In 1973, when Joseph turned 18, he joined the U.S. military, and he says that he was stationed in Vietnam. His mom says that he was stationed in Germany. I don't know what's up with this mother and son. They can never, like, agree on anything, <laughs> it seems. Um, so I don't really know what was true, uh, but at this point, he also kind of broke off contact with his mom. And during his time in the military, he also became addicted to some very, very heavy drugs. Like, we're talking the big H here. That was an H. <laughs> yes, the big H. I don't know if I'm allowed to say it. Fill in the blanks for me. After his time in the military, he comes back to Baltimore and his addiction to drugs like really continues and escalates. He's addicted to drugs, he's having problems with alcohol, and he starts to get in trouble with the police as well. He was known ironically as Tiny, like people would call him Tiny even though this guy was like 6'1", he was overweight. I think I saw like some article saying like he was like 
at or like close to 400 pounds like he was a big guy then he actually meets a woman I couldn't really find that much information about her and honestly I'd want to kind of keep her out of it anyway but she was also addicted to drugs and the two of them ended up getting married so Joseph and her were married they were doing drugs together like all kinds of drugs like the big H the C you know just getting into all this mess but eventually they actually have a son together and at this time Joseph was a truck driver so he would be gone for like long periods of time as a truck driver would which you know I honestly think is a little ironic considering like he thought he was so neglected as a child but then because his mom was like working all the time but then like he goes and he's like I'm gonna get a job where I'm gone all the time whatever so one day I think his son was about six years old at this time he comes home and the house is completely empty like his wife had cleared everything out she had taken her like their kid and she was gone like gone in the wind and he was Furious. Joseph was like tearing it up. He ran out and he started to hit like different dens, like the drug dens, to try to track his wife down. And somebody told him that his wife was actually with another guy now and that they were in South Baltimore under like this bridge. So, like, they were living on the streets at this point. And this person said that his wife was involved in some, you know, uh, prostitution at this point. Uh, probably just, you know, to get some money for more drugs, I imagine. Unfortunately, that's quite common, I think. So Joseph at this point was super enraged, like he was a very angry guy already and he was out like looking for revenge, like he wasn't trying to like get his wife back, you know, romantically, like he wanted revenge on her. But before he could get her or get to her, she was actually arrested for prostitution and their son was taken into foster care so hopefully I really really hope that you know his son ended up living a good life and was taken care of in foster care here's hoping it seems like at this point Joseph understands that like he's not going to be able to get his son back from foster care because of his criminal record that doesn't stop him from trying to get revenge on his wife and the guy that she left him for so he heads down to that bridge where he heard that they were at like where they like smoked or did whatever kind of drugs that they were doing you know and there, on like a, an old mattress, he finds these two guys smoking the sea. <laughs> and uh, these guys are named Randy and Randall. Now, he questions them and he's like, where's my wife? Do you know where she is? Do you know where the guy that she left me for is? And they say they have no idea. You know, they're just chilling. They're doing their own thing. But... Joseph decides no. He decides that these guys must know where they are, that they're lying to him. So he ends up actually killing these two guys, chopping them up, and then leaving. That very same night, he finds another woman who is addicted to the C word, and he lures her under the bridge with the C word. He gets her high and he tries to get information out of her. Like at this point, he's like convinced that everybody knows where his wife is and that like nobody's telling him. But honestly, this woman probably didn't know his wife, maybe had never even met her because this woman's like, I don't know who she is. I don't know what you're talking about, but he doesn't believe her. So he ends up beating this woman sexually assaulting her and killing her and throwing her body in bushes to hide it. 
Then he goes and he finds another woman who's also addicted to drugs and does basically the same thing. Brings her under the bridge, gets her high, questions her, and when she doesn't give him the information that he wants, he sexually assaults her and then strangles her. Then when he's going to dispose of her body, he sees a man at like the river, like fishing, and he grabs a lead pipe and he cracks the man's skull open. Yeah, this was a crazy night, like an angry, rage-filled, just like, I don't know, rampage. Like he was on a rampage at this point trying to find his wife. So after he killed that man with the pipe, that poor guy who was just in the wrong place at the wrong time, he ended up taking the two girls' bodies and that guy's body and he brought them down to the river and he weighed them down with a bunch of rocks at the bottom. He is reported with saying that that night he had killed five people within seven hours. Yeah. Pretty insane. So two weeks after all of that went down, he ends up getting arrested for the murder of those two homeless men under the bridge. And he was like waiting for trial for a while, but when he actually goes to trial, he ends up getting acquitted because there just isn't enough evidence. So, while Joseph was awaiting trial for, you know, the two, murder of the two homeless men, he actually was in jail for like a year and a half. And you think that would have been like a good time for him to maybe like reflect on his life, maybe recuperate, get off of drugs. But no, no, it just kind of made him worse even. After he got out, he went right back to his old ways. So after he got out of jail, he ended up getting a job at like his old company. Like he talked to like his old boss. It was a pallet company. Yeah. And uh, there was like a trailer next to the company and he was able to convince his boss to let him stay in that trailer. And now, according to Joseph, the trailer and, like, the company was, like, at the end of this isolated road, so it was perfect for what he wanted to do. And what did he want to do? Well, Joseph lured two women who were sex workers and also were addicted to drugs. He lured them back to his trailer with the promise of drugs. And there, he killed these women, but unlike the previous crimes, which were kind of in the, you know, like they were like a passion, anger, like he was on a little bit of a ramp, well not a little bit, a, on a huge rampage at that point. These were crimes that were more planned out, and he had a different method to disposing of the bodies this time around. He would actually chop them up and put their flesh into containers and put them in his fridge and then like the rain remains like the bones and everything he buried them behind the company that he now worked at i bet in retrospect his boss really regrets letting him stay in that trailer now this is where we get to the gross, the really gross stuff. I mean, everything so far has been gross, but this is the really gross stuff. So he has all this meat in his fridge, in his freezer, and he decides that he wants to make a little extra money. So he opens his own food truck on the side of the road, like a barbecue food truck. And he actually takes some of these people's bodies, the meat from their bodies, or so he claims. This again can't really be proven. I mean, all the evidence was consumed. Anyway, <laughs> he grinds up the bodies with the other meats and makes these 
burgers and sandwiches and feeds them to other people. <laughs> Stories like this make me so glad I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> so Joseph would make these I mean, I've heard hamburgers, I've also heard them, people call them like beef and pork, roast beef and pork sandwiches. Anyway, he claimed, Joseph, he said that human flesh tasted a lot like pork, and if you mixed it in, you really couldn't tell the difference. Apparently, Joseph's truck was also doing well. People liked these sandwiches. Like, there's no way to really know how many people actually like came and went and who ate other, you know, who ate these people and not. It's, it's really hard to tell and I mean, gosh, when all this news came out, I can only imagine if you were somebody who like got food from that truck, like that would haunt me for the rest of my life. Like, I'd be like, oh, my god like oh it's so it's so horrible to think about but anyway like his business was doing well he was making good money but eventually he ran out of his secret ingredient so he's out of his special ingredients and he finds this woman named rita and he like the other victims lures her back to his trailer with the promise of drugs uh, so they get high together, and he, like the other victims, he strangles her, he sexually assaults her, and when he, like, turns his back, I guess, to go get, like, whatever he needs to, like, dismember her body, she, Rita, was actually playing dead or, like, went limp and, like, but she was awake, like, she was cognitive at this point. She makes a run for it. And he is like, oh shit, there she goes. But he doesn't think she's gonna get out because, so he's not like too worried at this point because there's like this large bar barbed wire fence thing there like around the company. Cause this is around the company. So, you know, they have like protection and gates to prevent like people from breaking in. And also in this case, to prevent somebody from getting out. So Rita books it, he does follow after her, and like I said before, he's like a big guy, like he's like 400 something pounds, and he's following after her, and he's like shocked because she actually climbs over the fence, and Rita gets away. Whew. So Rita is booking it, like she's booking it, she gets to the main road and she flags down a truck driver and she goes to this guy, she tells him everything that happened, she's like this guy brought me back to his trailer, he like strangled me, like he tried to kill me and the truck driver like lets her hop on the truck, they go together to a gas station and there they contact the police. Now, Joseph, at this point, he's kind of, like, accepting his fate, weirdly. Like, he's like, all right, I'm gonna get caught. So he actually goes and just sits outside and waits for the police to come. And they do come pretty quickly. So Joseph gets arrested at this point. It's 1996, and he really confesses to, like, everything. It was a very lengthy confession. Uh, he even, you know, admits to killing the two homeless men. He tells them about the other three that he killed that night as well and takes them to where he had, you know, put the bodies in the river and weighed them down. But at this point, they don't find anything. Like, there's no remains left. So this is where things get a little complicated because he does confess to about, like, ten murders. But they don't really have like the evidence or they can't find like the bodies for all of them. But for the ones that they do know about, he does end up getting the death sentence. Though this ends up being overturned later. Instead of the death penalty, he ended up getting two life sentences. Which, honestly, I, I think that that's better. Just like let the jerk rot in jail forever. He, like, he's disgusting. He deserves it. And he wasn't even sorry. Like, he said something along the lines of, like, you'll never hear the word sorry come out of my mouth. 
and that the only thing that he regretted was that he was never able to kill his wife and the man that she left him for. So he's really a scumbag. Side note here too, one of the things that like he confessed to was putting the people's bodies in with the like the meat and like feeding it to people but again this was never proven so it could be a false claim it seemed like joseph did kind of lie sometimes but at the same time there's no way to know if he did or didn't i mean for the sake of all those people that went to his truck i hope that it was a lie or an embellishment maybe he didn't do it as much as he said he did, but again, there's no way to know. On August 5th in 2017, Joseph was found in his prison cell dead. Now the cause of death, I haven't really been able to find. If anybody knows, let me know. I would love to know if it was like foul play or something like that. I think I heard some people say that it might have been. But then again, he was like a very overweight, large man. It could have been something else. I mean, he was only 62, but still, I would like to know. So that was the story of Joseph, our cannibal who turned unwilling victims into cannibals themselves. Possibly. Allegedly. There's really no proof that it actually happens. But I don't know. What do you guys think? Are you going to go to that little food truck on the side of the road and get that mystery meat even though you don't know what's in there. Up to you. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed this week's video. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for joining me again this week. I love hanging out with you guys. And if you have any video suggestions or any comments about this very strange, horrible case, please leave them in the comments below. I would love to discuss all of this with you guys. Also, I really hope you enjoyed my painting this week. It's a little different from what I've been doing, but you know, this is all new and I just wanna play around and have some fun with it. So I hope you're, well, fun's a strong word, but I still hope that you guys enjoyed it regardless. I hope you have a great rest of your week and weekend, and I'll see you next Tuesday. Bye.